Today, Iran's supreme leader vowed to retaliate in the event of an attack and condemned Western-backed oil sanctions on his country. According to Reuters, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei spoke on state TV to mark the 1979 Islamic Revolution. On Thursday, the U.S. Senate Banking Committee approved sanctions on Iran that could cut billions of dollars of revenue from abroad. The legislation called the Iran Sanctions Accountability and Human Rights Act would stop transfers through the telecommunications network called SWIFT and add to already strict sanctions on Iran's central bank. The bill now moves to the full Senate. Rhetoric from the U.S. and Israel has risen this week as U.N. said a team of nuclear inspectors will return to Iran later this month. For more, we're joined by Aran Kashavarzian, associate professor at NYU's Department of Middle Eastern and Islamic Studies. Welcome to FSRN. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Let's begin with how these sanctions could affect uh, the society in Iran. Uh, yes, I think that's an important issue because there's been a lot of attempt, uh, discussion about these sanctions being as a vehicle and a weapon against the regime, uh, which is a highly debatable issue. What is more clear is that uh, the sanctions are already having deep uh, impacts on Iranian society, uh, specifically the middle class. Uh, it's made uh, the import of many basic uh, goods into Iran, uh, either impossible or extremely expensive. So um, imported medicine and and the such has already been impacted. Also, uh, for many Iranians who have um, uh, children studying abroad in Europe, in in North America, in other parts of the world, um, how supporting their their, their children in their studies has become more difficult because the price of the, the local currency, the real, um, uh, has uh, d- uh, dramatically d- declined, uh, so it's a lot, lot more expensive to, to send kind of monthly checks to, to their children for their studies. So um, what's clear is as the, the economic de- uh, situation in Iran deteriorates, it's uh, you know as, as usual it's the middle class, uh, the working uh, working middle class, um, and the lower classes that are going to be hurt the most by the various aspects of, of the sanctions. Well, much of the attention lately has been on government officials and their comments, whether it's Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak, who said on Thursday that the window was closing to end Iran's nuclear program that was seen as a warning of a strike. U.S. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta weighed in as well on that. But what about the state of Iran's civil society and how, how could these sanctions affect the opposition movement? Um, it's clear that there's a good a strong constituency within Iran uh, who uh, have, you know, uh, grievances towards the regime. It, to me, the, the sanctions and the kind of very bellicose rhetoric coming out of uh, Washington, D.C. And, uh, and Tel Aviv um, simply just undermines uh, these activists. Um, this is an anti-imperial regime, um, and, and, this, um, and this type of rhetoric just uh, strengthens their argument that they are standing up to a um, a, a, a foreign power that is fundamentally against the, the will of the Iranian nation. Um, so this is the old rhetoric of the Islamic Rep- uh, Republic, which they can kind of, in a sense, revitalize because of this bellicose uh, rhetoric coming out of uh, the Obama administration and, of course, out of uh, the Israeli government. That this rhetoric could possibly play into that and play into the domestic politics in that way. Yes, exactly. It, it could have this very negative consequence. Aran Kashavarzian is Associate Professor of Middle Eastern and Islamic Studies at New York University. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.